On today's episode of the Bam Bam Motorsports YouTube channel, let's see if I can fucking electrocute myself with this cheap piece of Chineseium. today uh, is one of these really cheap pistol grip style stick welders from Amazon. Uh, this one in particular is a Bitabi, Toby, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo. <laughs> I think it's pronounced Bitobi. Uh, it's uh, B T O V I. Uh, this is <laughs> this thing basically started as a joke on one of the uh, welding Facebook groups that I'm sure a lot of you uh, have been on before. And I basically made him a deal where if they could get me to uh, 250 subscribers by the end of the week, I would buy this thing and uh, try to give it a God's honest review. And we didn't quite get there on the subscribers, but the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just go ahead and buy it and try it out. I don't have high hopes for this thing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do an unboxing video for you. We're going to try to run uh, some, I think I have some 6010 rod, maybe even some 7018 and see if this thing will even strike an arc. Like I said, I don't really have high hopes for it. Honestly, I'm probably going to end up electrocuting myself. This may be the last episode of the Bam Bam Motorsports uh, channel. So stick with me. Uh, we'll go ahead and get this thing unboxed and we'll try to run some rod on it and just see what happens. Okay, so here we have the welder. I have not opened this, as you can see. Um, it, it does come in this uh, neat little carrying case. It's got some plastic wrapped around it. So let's go ahead and get that off of there and see what kind of wonders await us inside. Nice, nice. It does have a little, you know, carrying handle on it. It's got dual zippers. Oh, wow. Look at this unit. I got a little brush, chip and hammer. Uh, I'm sure it is darn near useless. Uh, anybody who wants to play with one of these probably got a grinder close by. Uh, now, in the in the pictures online, these things look like they're cordless. They are not. This is you know 110 volt household plug. Um, does have a really short looking ground lead on it. Uh, it looks like you would squeeze this to put the rod in. And this thing stinks, to be honest with you. Uh, it definitely smells like coronavirus. You've got, oh, I think this is the handle for the awesome face shield that comes with this thing. I mean, hell, who needs a Lincoln Viking or, or a Miller helmet or an Aesop when you got one of these units? Oh my Atlanta, top notch here. I think it smells like a used dildo. Oh yeah, baby. It even comes with one of them, their auto darkening lenses. And by auto darkening, I mean it's just always dark. Now the handle done fell off. Wow. I don't even think this thing fits. Oh, we are set to jet. This is freaking awesome. I'm just going to throw my other helmets in the trash. 
This thing doesn't even go on it. Ah, there we go. Oh, she snapped into place. All right. Let me get everything set up. Uh, it's as short as the cords are on this thing. I don't have any choice. I'm going to have to run this thing off of an extension cord, which I highly do not recommend. Because if I had to imagine, this thing probably pulls some serious amps at the plug because it's probably, probably about as efficient as an old big block Ford truck. Uh, wow, the power switch uh, is already out of it. I don't see any, I don't see any heat adjustment on this thing at all. It's just rated at 24.8 volts. And it says rated input power 4.6 kilowatts, 85% efficiency. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't think that that's uh, all that truthful. But anyway, let me get, let me get set up here. We'll get some metal laid out here on the table and we'll see if this thing will even strike an arc. All right, so after <laughs> I shut the camera off, I went to move the carrying case and a small package of rods fell out of the case that they had included with the machine. I cannot make out too much on this rod. There's some Chinese symbols and then what appears to be the letter J422. I'm no professional welder. Uh, that might actually mean something, um, but I don't know exactly what it would mean. Uh, so we're gonna try the rods that they included first and see, you know, you know what's gonna go, whether that's gonna go good or bad. Um, also, I said that there was no heat adjustment and that is actually wrong. Uh, I noticed after shutting the camera off that on top there is an adjustment on the top here you've got off and then it goes all the way to five and stops but it's funny because the dial clearly has a six and seven that's hidden over here but it will not let you get that high i also noticed when you flip the power switch on it dims the lights in the shop so this thing must pull some serious current to fill all the capacitors and stuff in this machine when you flip it on uh, i don't know if you noticed that but it kind of dimmed the lights for a second here in the shop it has a really loud fan on it, like super loud. <laughs> so, yeah, let me uh, let me go find some gloves and we'll try this thing out. All right. Now I'm assuming that once you squeeze the trigger on it, you still have to strike an arc. I don't believe there's any high frequency start on this thing, and for the price point, I can't imagine that there would be. I can't believe it even struck an arc. It looks like hammered dog doo-doo. I'm pretty sure the, uh, the weld is just made out of pure fucking rubber. I struggled when I started to get a puddle going but then after just a little bit it actually did start to make a little bit of a puddle so let's uh let's try that again Wow. Now, full disclosure, I'm, I'm running it on the highest heat setting, uh, literally just to see if it trips a breaker or explodes in my hand, uh, hence the really ugly fat weld. But I gotta say,
this actually this is actually kind of impressive I'm I'm not even gonna lie when I decided to do this as a joke I didn't even think it was gonna strike an arc but holy shit it welds I mean it doesn't weld the best but neither do I I mean that's for what this is that's actually fantastic And that's a, I mean, that's a well-penetrated weld, too. I mean, I would say amperage-wise, it's probably running, like, right at 100, maybe 105. Because these are only, I don't know what size these rods are. I would have to measure them. But, eighth inch, maybe. Wow. Wow. And I didn't get the shit shocked out of me. That's just, just as shocking as anything. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do, guys. Uh, I'm going to continue playing around with this thing. And I may try to use it in the shop, like for light duty projects. And come back and, you know, maybe in a few months and, and do another review. Do a longevity review on this thing. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of time tonight to really weld much more. I just wanted to kind of, kind of fit this review into my schedule. But, uh... Yeah, well, and these rods that they got, man, these things are super easy to run. Like I said, when you're welding, it's kind of weird because the puddle, the puddle almost looks like rubber. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't look like any 6010 or 7018 I've ever run. That, that's, that's the only way I know to explain it. But, uh, yeah, wow. So, I wouldn't call it a full review, but my initial review of the old... Ball with a ball to bang to dang diddy diddy or whatever the fuck this thing is called. Uh, not terrible. Not saying that I would probably spend $150 of my own money on it. I mean, for that kind of money, $20 more, you can go get a Harbor Freight Flux Core welder and, uh, you know, be one of them uh, Instagram MIG guys. You know, the ones with the giant schlongs and whatnot. Y'all you, you know the type I'm talking about. But, yeah, so, I mean, that's it for tonight. But uh, thank y'all for watching and... Uh, We'll see you on the next one.